Emerald Robinson, and in this What Is video, we're going to investigate the state of matter called a gas. Gases are materials that have no definite volume and no specific shape. In other words, gases can easily flow into and take the shape of a container and will expand, redistributing themselves to evenly fill that container. Although there are many types of gases, there are a few characteristics that they have in common. First, particles in a gas have no real arrangement. They can move over and past one another, and the space between the molecules can increase or decrease. Molecules in a gas collide with one another and move more quickly or more slowly based on factors like temperature and pressure, but they will always spread out fairly equally to fill the space that they're in. All of this molecular movement means that gases hold a lot of kinetic energy, energy caused by motion. Second, gases can be compressed. Because there is space between the molecules in a gas, it can be placed under pressure and squeezed so that the particles are forced to be close to one another. Third, gases can flow from one area to another, although the direction of flow is not directly affected by gravity. This ability to flow means they are sometimes referred to as fluids. Last, gases have melting points and boiling points that are below room temperature. For the most part, we are unable to see gases because of the space between their particles. Scientists have to use characteristics like pressure, volume, number of particles per unit area, and temperature to discuss and identify them. Gases are commonly used in things like cooking, healthcare, and scientific research, and they even make up the air we breathe. In a demonstration of Boyle's Law, we'll place a balloon in a vacuum bell jar. We'll apply a vacuum which basically pumps out the air in the bell jar. The pressure outside the balloon will be greater than the pressure inside. The balloon expands to try and equalize the pressure. Volume and pressure are inversely related to each other. When we release the vacuum, the pressure increases and the volume decreases. As another demonstration of Boyle's Law, we will put a marshmallow piece into our vacuum jar. The marshmallow contains air trapped in a mixture of gelatin and sugar. As we apply the vacuum, the pressure outside is lower than the pressure inside. The air in the piece will expand to try and equalize the pressure. When we release the vacuum, the pressure increases and the volume decreases. As another illustration of Boyle's Law, we'll put some shaving cream into our vacuum jar. The shaving cream contains air trapped in a soap mixture. As we apply a vacuum, the pressure outside is lower than the pressure inside. The shaving cream will expand to try and equalize the pressure. As you decrease the pressure, the volume increases. Now let us look at some examples of spontaneous changes and see how they are accounted for in terms of the second law of thermodynamics. We'll take the simplest first and look at changes where only the entropy changes. Now one, perhaps the simplest of all, these is the expansion of a gas into a vacuum. I have in one of these bulbs some bromine and in the other, I have 
uh, a vacuum. And if I open the tap between these two, you will see spontaneously the bromine rush from one to the other. Now that is the simplest change we can have, perhaps, because all that happens is a change in entropy. In this case, the expansion into a vacuum, nothing else is involved. There's no energy change, there's no temperature change, there's no change except entropy. So without the entropy concept, that would have been difficult to understand and difficult to account for.